You know, our recent podcast about trying to get Al Oliver into the Baseball Hall of Fame has uh, drawn a lot of positive thoughts. And some of the followers of the channel have mentioned this guy as kind of the poor man's uh, Al Oliver, and that's a compliment. What he did in baseball was tremendous, were it not from a massive rotator cuff injury in the later part of his career, in the late 70s, early 80s. His numbers would have been a lot better. I uh, call this guy a PH. He was the first official DH in history, but he should have been a PH, professional uh, hitter. Of course, the great and the well-respected Larry Heisel. Now, Larry Eugene Heisel, born Portsmouth, Ohio, USA, uh, played Major League Baseball for the Phillies, the Twins, and the Brewers between 68 and 82. A a two-time All-Star. He was the uh, 1977 American League RBI champion. Of course, that great year with the terrific numbers put up in Foster and Carew and Rose. He was pretty well a top five player in the league that year. As a coach, he was a member of the two-time World Series winning squads for the Blue Jays in the early 1990s, helping to guide young prospects like Ole Rude and uh, the other um, uh, Canadian and American superstars on the team. Now, when he was drafted by the Phillies in the second round of the 65 MLB draft, he was the 38 overall pick. He signed in August and made his pro debut with the Class A Euro Phillies in 66. He made his MLB debut on April 10, 68, and played in seven games before being sent down to the minors. Heisel played his first full season in 69 when he batted 266 with 20 home runs and finished fourth in NL Rookie of the Year voting. His average of uh, unfortunately plummeted to 204 over the next two seasons, and he was subsequently traded to the Dodgers on October 21, 71. He spent all of the 72 campaign with the AAA Albuquerque Dukes, where he batted 325 with 23 homers, 91 runs batted in, and 20 stolen bases over 131 games. Now, for some reason, the reason the Dodgers couldn't find him uh, as a starter, and after the 72 campaign, he was traded to the Cardinals. Just over a month later, on November 29, 72, he was traded yet again, along with John Cumberland, to the Minnesota Twins for Wayne Granger. <coughs> now, in his spring training game for the Twins on March 6, 73, he was MLB's first designated hitter. In five at-bats, he hit two home runs, one of them a grand slam, and had seven RBIs. Of course, Ron Blomberg was the first official MLB game DH, but it all comes back to Heisel. A month later, again, Blomberg... Uh, became the first DH in a regular season contest. That year, Heisel had a breakout season yet again, 272 with 15 homers. He remained a reliable member of the Twins lineup throughout the mid-70s and hit for the cycle on June 4, 76. His best season again came with the Twins in 77 when he hit 302 with 28 homers and 119 RBIs and uh, killed uh, a lot of hopes for AL West dominance by the, uh, the, the Royal, only the Royals uh, couldn't, uh, could stop him. Now, after the 77 campaign, he became a free agent assigned with the Brewers. In 78, Heisel turned another productive year as he hit 290 and finished third in AL MVP voting. His 34 homers, 115 RBIs, and 96 runs scored, played second, third, and fifth in the AL, respectively. A torn Raiders trader cuff suffered in 79, limited Heisel's playing time for the remainder of his career, as he only took the field in 79 contests or his final four seasons before retiring in 82. Now, Heisel was also the hitting coach for the Blue Jays from 92 to 95, helping them to World Series titles in 92 and 93. Under his coaching in 93, Toronto players John Orood, former Brewers teammate Paul Molitor, and Roberto Alomar finished 1-2-3 in the American League in batting average. Of course, Devon White and Joe Carter also had great seasons that year. As of 2019, Heisel was employed with the Brewers as manager of Utah Reach and uh, a president of the Major League Mentoring in Milwaukee. Now, what what really stands out with a lot of people, his sweet swing and uh, his overall uh, dedication to come back from the from the high minors after having a great um, start to his career, he never gave up on the, the possibility he could be the best player he could be. Now, uh, career batting average of 273, 166 home runs, 674 uh, four RBIs. All star in 77 78, of course, two time World Series champion with Toronto, 92 93, and champion uh, AL RBI leader 
1977. And that's saying a lot because there was a lot of key players that season that kind of took away that limelight. Now, uh, for me, again, I really believe that 77-78 season made him a bar key player in every aspect because he was stealing a lot of bases, and I can tell you why. Between 76 and uh, 78, uh, it was 62 stolen bases, 31 and 76 as well. So he could easily been a, a 20-20. He was a 20-20 player in 77. Uh, problem is he will strike out quite often. He's usually a strikeout to uh, walk ratio was a more on the, uh, what do you call, the strikeout uh, side. He struck out 941 times his career with only 462 uh, uh, bases on balls. Now, when the Phillies were getting back into uh, what he call uh, playoff dominance, uh, everybody thought uh, that uh, leaving Heisel go was a mistake. I think he just wasn't ready for the, for the major leagues enough. Those two seasons when he was in there, it just seemed that he lost his swing, especially in the 71 season. And, uh, you know, it was it was rough on him because he was batting, you know, 250 to 270 in most of his career seasons, and it wasn't working out. But like I said, the strikeouts were his big, uh, big problem. Now, uh, home run totals, 20 and 69, 10 and 1970, 15 and 73, uh, 19 and 74, 11 and 75, 14 and 76, 28 and 77, uh, 34 and 78, and again, the rotator cuff kind of ruined his career. It was, it was getting that bad his last season. He only batted 129 after the previous year, batting over uh, 230. And I think if he was healthier, he could have really c- contributed uh, to the, the Brewers' rush for that World Series title in 82, 82 and of course, 81 to make in the playoffs. But 82 with highs in the lineup, who knows what would have happened. There were, he could have batted him sixth or... Or third, he would have done a, done a great job. But for me, Larry Heisel, one of the most underrated players of all time. And uh, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It, it does worse when you hear people talk about Al Oliver or think about Larry Heisel or vice versa. But uh, a very, very, like I said, a PH, a professional hitter. And uh, if he would have cut down the strikeouts, who knows what type of statistics he would have had. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here with our vintage Major League Baseball podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, swing for the fences. Bye.